hello beautiful people you're welcome back to my channel thank you for tuning in if this is your first time of coming on here and if you're a returning subscriber you're highly welcome you know the drill please do also click the subscribe button like this video share comment drop some lovely comments and all that good stuff so let's jump right into the video so today we're talking about money Yes, money. <laughs> We'd always draw inspirations from the scriptures because this is a faith-based channel. On here, we talk about faith, we talk about God, we talk about love and lifestyle. So what does the Bible say about money? The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. And there's this misconception that, I mean, people have coined it or misconstrued it. And I always hear people say, Money is the root of all evil. No, money is not the root of all evil. Money is very good. Money is very essential. Money is a tool, actually. It's a tool of exchange of value. In simple terms, that is what money is. So that is what I can define money to be. But then, it is sad that this same money that is supposed to be a tool has now become an object of worship to a lot of people. It has now become a god. It has now become an idol in the hearts of people. God knows how human beings perceive money to be. God knows how the intention, the actual intention was that money will serve people. Now people have turned around and are serving money, sadly. The Bible in Matthew 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and every other thing, including money, will be added unto you. But what do we see these days? People are seeking money. People are seeking the every other thing that God said will be added when we seek him and his kingdom first. They are leaving the instruction. They are leaving seeking God and seeking the thing that is supposed to follow, seeking the aftermath, seeking the blessings of God that is supposed to follow someone that seeks after God, someone that is running after God. What is that idol in your heart? Is it money? For a lot of us, it's money. Oh, even me too. I, I, I've, I've been on that path. You know, there was a time where business was flourishing and I was priding myself in, you know, I've got this. I can, you know, I look at my account and be so confident in my account, in my bank balance. A lot of us have so much confidence in what we have in our accounts. The Bible says, store up, lay up treasures for yourself in heaven where there's no thief, where there's no lust, where there's no corruption. We are doing the exact opposite and we are laying up treasures for ourselves, being confident in what we have in our accounts. Some of us, when there's no money in the accounts, it's, it now, we can't even be joyful, we can't even be happy because there is no money. And that is, if you look critically at it, that is a way of, it, if you look at it, it shows that there's some sort of worship. If you search deeply, if you use the word of God to search deeply, set your heart deeply you'll see that there's there's that idolatry there's that worship of money somewhere hidden in your heart because why is a material thing that can come and go determining your joy determining your happiness determining your mood for the day for the week for the month and even the year it shouldn't be so the issue of people seeking after money and not seeking after god of course even down to when we when we're in church when we're asked to pray Oh, ask God for one thing. People are asking God, God, I need 10 billion. God, I need 100 million. What are you going to use it to do? Really? What will you use it to do? I need this. I need that. How many people did you see in the Bible? How many people have you read of in the Bible that prayed for money? You see, even Solomon that had everything. When God asked him, what do you want? He asked for wisdom. People like David, they wanted to know God more. They wanted to know him more. People like Apostle Paul. We see all these people. You can't find... A place in the scripture where it says, Oh, this person was asking God for money, or God says, God gives a blank check now. I say, Ask me for anything. And then you read in the scripture that the person was asking for money. I mean, I've, I've, I mean, I've not read that, I've not come across any of that in the scripture. And then, why we need to ask ourselves, Why do we even pray for money? Why do we even pray for these things that has already, these things that have already been given to us in Christ Jesus? I still casting and binding and praying and kabashing and. You know, doing all those theatrics. One of the reasons why we are praying for money 
is for selfish desires. We want to climb the, the corporate ladder. We want to be up there. All of these things don't, there's, there's no way you can find God in any of these reasons, in any of these selfish reasons. We want to be there. We want to be this and that. We want to attain heights, human heights. Not even considering, oh, what do I do for God with this money? This money that God has given me, what can I do for him? There's no kingdom agenda in your on your list of what you on, on your list of the reasons why you don't want money to start with. There's no there's nothing about God that is on your list. It is wrong. Okay, another reason could be maybe there was a prophecy that came and said, Oh, this person, you are going to be a billionaire, you are going to be this, you are going to be that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It is good to have money. It is very, very essential to have money. But my point is the motive. Why do you want to have this money? Why are you asking God for this thing? That is my point. That is the that is where the issue lies. So, for instance, there was a prophecy over somebody, and it was declared that the person will be a billionaire, the person will liberate their family, the person will be this and be this, who want to lift you from the dunghill, and you know, all sorts of prophecies. And then we'll take that and run with it. Instead of allowing God to do the work by himself, we now want to help God. We now want to put our hands into different things because, oh, that prophecy must be fulfilled by fire and by thunder. It could even, it could even be an anxiety. Maybe you're coming from a family where your parents didn't have money. And you've told yourself, ah, this poverty. God will punish poverty. Money will suffer in my hand. Money will do this in my hand. I will make no sense of money. I will do what... It's just funny the, the various reasons that people have when they're doing certain things. And you don't know, we don't know that that, that um, thought is coming from a place of fear, a place of anxiety, because you don't want to end up like your parents. You've seen them suffer so much. You've seen them be in lack. You've seen them not even being able to afford basic things. And then that is, that is what is motivating you. That is your... That is your motivating factor. That is the reason why you want to get money, to mess money up, to show money that you have arrived. And for some other people, it could be the lack of understanding of that scripture, Matthew 6, verse 33. They don't, they're not, they've not taken time to sit down and understand what the scripture says. They just see the parts of every other thing shall be added unto you. So they want to add everything by themselves. They don't even want to seek God. They just push God, shove God to the corner. And they're looking for everything else, looking for every other thing, toiling day and night, putting hand through this, playing one for the length or the other, because we want to make money is supposed to serve people. But people are now, people have turned around and are serving it. People are worshiping it as a God. The space that God is supposed to take in your heart, money, mammon has, has overwhelmed it, has enveloped that space. We need to check our hearts. We need to check our hearts. Who is on the throne of our hearts? Is it money? Is it the love of money? Or is it God? People, I mean, people have all sorts of agenda, all sorts of reasons why they want to make money. And it is, it is the driving force, it is the reason, the motive behind what you're doing that is going to now determine what you put your hand into. If you can even do anything for money, then it shows, it shows where your heart really lies. It shows who, who or what is actually ruling in your hearts ruling in our hearts people have taken to trusting in money rather than trusting in god proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path that money you are looking for god knows where it is look at jesus and peter after they had toyed all night trying to catch fish and they, they couldn't get anything and then the next day jesus now said put your cast your nets there and they got a drought of fish. And then on another occasion, Jesus told Peter, pick, pick this fish and open the mouth. You'll see money there. So this God that you're running away from, that you don't even want to serve, that has everything, including the money that you're looking for and everything else, in the palm of his hand. He knows where the money is. And then we're now trying to do things in our own understanding. We're not trying to trust in money so much so that even when the money is not physically available, what people call broke, being broke, we don't. Uh, we we tend to lose our joy. We are sad. People become depressed because there is no money. What whatever happened to the joy of the Lord being our strength? Trust me, I'm not here to condemn anybody or judge anybody because I've had my own fair, fair share of these experiences. There's been times when I've been down because what there was no money in my account. So I can I can understand where I'm speaking from and I I, I know what I'm actually saying. 
and I know that a lot of people are also in this same category where whereby when, when there's no money, when there's no physical cash, when there's no readily available funds, people become sad, people lose their joy, they can't even sing praises to God anymore, they can't become thankful for the gift of life because there is no money. What happened to the peace that you have? Is that not enough to thank God for? We now lose our senses of gratitude because there is no money. What is the God in your life? Is it the Almighty God or is it money? What is what has taken position? What has uh, assumed position in your heart? Check. Ask yourself questions. And we see these things even in the church. Yeah, there, there are times when somebody comes out to give a testimony, and the person is like, "Oh, praise God! I thank God. I, I've been battling series of problems and." But now I pray to God and the, God, the Lord has given me peace of mind. And the applause is very low because who cares about peace of mind, right? Who cares about the joy of the Lord? <laughs> but when somebody comes and says, oh, I got promoted in my office and my salary has been doubled. My salary has been tripled. I got this contract, what billions of naira. You see that the applause goes really high. You see that the applause goes really high. And with that, you can tell where the hearts of people are. Like it will show, it will show in everything that we do. We think that we can hide these things. We cannot hide these things from God. Even if you can hide it from people, we cannot hide these things from God. So please let's try and check our hearts. Be truthful to yourself. Who is ruling in your heart? Who is ruling in your life? Is it God or is it money? If it is money, please make a 180 degree turn. Come back to God though, because he has everything, including the money that you are looking for. But if you are on the path of money, money cannot give you God, but God can give you money. Yeah. God can give you money and more. Give you money, give you peace of mind, give you joy, give you love, everything that you need. So let's stop pursuing after the wrong thing and channel our pursuit in the right direction. Chase after God, seek him. Seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and every other thing will be added unto you. So let me just quickly, in closing, share some of the consequences of pursuing money instead of pursuing God. It tends to breed greed. Before you know it, greed sets in because human wants are insatiable. You want to get this, and when you get this, you want to get more. When you get it, you want to, like, it never ends. The cycle never ends. You just want more and more and more and more. To what end? And then it also takes your focus away from God. It shifts your focus away from God. Because you cannot serve two gods. Money, money is a God. The love of money is a God. And then there is God, the almighty God. You cannot serve two gods. It's either you're serving God or you're serving money. And then ultimately, you tend to lose on the path of eternity because instead of using your life to chase after God, you were chasing after something else. And sadly, money doesn't give anybody eternal life. Only God does. Yes, only God does. So let's ask ourselves, let's ask ourselves the big question. What is the God in your heart? What is the God in your life? Is money ruling you? Or are you using it as a tool to serve God? Are you worshipping money or are you worshipping God? It shows in the, in the things that we do, even in our thoughts in our actions, in our words. If we even check our bank balance, let's say our um, account balance or our bank statements for previous years or even just for last month, that alone will tell you where your, where your loyalty lies, whether it lies with money or whether it lies with God. Yes, as simple as that. You can even take that test. Go check your bank statement for last month, for last year, and see where your heart lies. See what you've been spending on. How much did you spend on God? How much did you spend on the purpose of God? How much did you spend on building kingdom projects? And how much did you spend on selfish desires? I pray that God will help us retrace our steps. I pray that God will help us come back to our first love. I pray that God will help us to continually seek his kingdom. Seek him, seek to know him and seek his righteousness so that everything that we're seeking, everything that we've been pursuing all this while, Will be added unto us. I pray God will strengthen us and provide all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' beautiful name I've prayed. Amen.
thank you for staying this long i know it's a long one i'm so sorry thank you for staying this long um please do well to subscribe like this video share to your friends drop a lovely comment if you even have questions something that you feel i should have addressed or something that you're not clear on you can drop in the comment section i'll do well to address them in another video and turn on your notification bell so that whenever i drop a video you'll be notified thank you so much for joining this video and for being on here god bless you till i come your way again keep believing and keep loving god